we're here with Blake Fuller. He's a, a very accomplished, super accomplished race car driver, especially electric race cars uh, the past few years, several years. Uh, Blake, can you just give us a little bit of background on your history in racing and especially electric racing? Yeah, so for those who haven't actually followed what I've been doing with racing Teslas, um, over the last five years, I've really been focusing on taking the production Tesla vehicles, whatever was the best from Tesla at the time, and actually competing at the Pikes Peak International Hill Climb, which for those who don't know it, it's a 12 and a half mile public road that's in a national park. And in that 12 and a half miles, you climb almost 5,000 feet to the summit at 14,000 feet. And in 2016, we took a Model S P90 DL, set a new record and won the electric production class. We returned in 2020 thanks to an entire community of individuals like yourself that were sponsors that wanted to see us go back and beat the record. So we took a Model 3 performance in production form and went out and beat that record by almost 50 seconds. And we won our class against a bunch of internal combustion and diesel powered vehicles, which was really great. So what's the next step? Well, this what is was the class? The class was the exhibition class. So it was basically anything goes, which is why they took the electrics and lumped those in with a bunch of specialty cars, uh, as well as production vehicles from Acura and from Ford and others that were factory back teams. So um, some may have seen the, the you know, should I say battle between Randy Pope's driving the unplugged yeah. Model 3 and, and his epic almost near <laughs> cliff jump. Um, but that was a really fun year, and as we saw this year, we the flag call. went out and actually um, won its class at Pikes Peak, but we figured we would take a plaid and go to another hill climb, which is actually one of the oldest roads in North America. So I remember growing up, and I'm from Florida, so. Yeah, this is sort, and, of, a, yeah. This is sort of an East Coast, West Coast battle, you know. It is a little bit, yeah, and, and coming, <laughs> coming from Florida, we're like literally the highest point where my town is, is like the dump. <laughs> um, it's a mountain, no, yeah, it's the dump. I think the highest point in Florida is somewhere around three or 400 feet. Yeah. I remember seeing a bunch of cars coming down from up north, there's like these stickers on them. It's a, you know, this car climbed Mount Washington. So I would look it up and Mount Washington is one of the highest peaks on the Eastern United States. It's 6,600 feet high. And not every year, but for over a hundred years, they've been racing cars up the top of Mount Washington. And there has never been a production electric vehicle to ever compete. So, Never. Oh, wow. Yeah, so we That's are pulling cool. a very last minute effort. As you know, the plaids are very difficult to get. And we were fortunate enough, thanks to the help of an individual locally, that helped us get this vehicle. You were going to get it in June. Ended up, you got it like uh, two days ago? Or uh, we received the two? car on Thursday. Today is Sunday. The car Sorry. stayed stock for less than 24 hours. And actually, the night that I got it, I stayed up pretty much through the night taking the beautiful interior out. To get it ready and so our goal is to take the plaid we're going to race it in production format so the suspension the um the interior of course is you know suspension and all that is going to be stock the drivetrain will be stock the interior you can see is removed here and we're getting it prepped to put in a roll cage that meets the requirements so Kind of it's what sort of, you see it's is sort what you of bitter, get. It's yeah. bittersweet to me yeah. i haven't <laughs> seen one uh i haven't seen a plaid in person yet so it's like you know i was it's sad to not see the, the the actual interior and everything, but at the same time, it's awesome to see that this car is getting prepped for a race that you know you're most definitely going to win. You're going to crush it. You're going. Blake knows how to drive a car. <laughs> like it's it's you're. I mean, there's race car drivers and there's another level. I think you're another level of. I think you're a very high level race car driver. So I, yeah. I'm really eager to see what you're going to do with this thing. It's one of those things you can you can always improve, and that's and that's the challenge of racing electric cars is that it's a blend of not only the skill behind the wheel, but also understanding how the car works to optimize it, and that's been something that has been part of. Do you feel like commenting yeah. on the wheel? <laughs> uh, or should we leave that? No, I think... Leave that for different... No, no, I mean, the yoke is a joke. Elon, it's dangerous. And um, okay. I, uh, oh I think it's great for spacecraft where there are, you know, multiple dimensions that you can move in and lots of space. But when you're in a very tightly confined road and you're trying to control what is an over 4,000 pound vehicle with 1,000 horsepower... It's and not you, the and ideal you, setup. Yeah. And you made a point to me a minute ago 
if you can if it only turns you well, yeah, maybe show show is, that a little is, bit well, well we actually put the yoke before the horse on this one so to speak so the, the goal is that when the electronically adjustable steering comes which will be steered by wire from tesla then that will allow and, and there are race cars out there that have that um that will allow for this and this to be the full range of motion of the front wheels okay the challenge is that with the model s platform you almost have to turn that yoke, because it's not a wheel, <laughs> it's steering yoke, almost three times all the way around, lock to lock. And you know, the Model 3, which we raced, is about 2.1 turns lock to lock, so I think the Model 3 can yeah. get away with it easier. <laughs> We've got my model, model, model 3 out here, and yeah. I, it's actually, I'm actually useful because uh, we're gonna see if the Model 3 wheel can be, if it's interchangeable, if we yep. can put a wheel like that on here, a uh, steering wheel, so that Blake can, uh, not die at Mount Washington. <laughs> Let's not say We that. don't want you to die out there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no. and, here, and here's the great thing. We, we are in a class of one. We're the first one to do this. So for us representing, this is about completion is success. Um, but because of the capabilities of the car, there is an opportunity for us to place very well against the rest of the competitors, which are made up of all professional drivers that oh, the majority of them have professional teams. So some of your top rally teams will be there with their top drivers and competitors that have actually raced the course before. This is going to be unique because this will be my first time racing at the hill. Oh, okay. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to end up taking out the sub and the amplifier, but I'm not sh sure how much time we'll have for that. So yeah, yeah. it didn't take about 20 is minutes. Any, any quick comments on what you've noticed uh, taking this apart so far? Any yeah, actually, um, externally, if somebody did a squint test, the new 2021 Model S's look very confusingly the same as other Model S's that even I have one outside that when people don't know, they wouldn't tell the difference. It's actually when you get the interior out and you start to make measurements that there is a whole lot of the car that are minute changes. So my guesstimate would be that almost 90% of the car is different than the outgoing Model S. Um, huge improvements from from a manufacturability standpoint. Like my Model S having taken that apart, I still have no and idea. And you have 2015 model? Uh, 2015, yeah. 2015 P90 model. DL. I still don't know how Tesla is profitable on that car. Even at 100 grand. <laughs> yeah. It's just so much labor to build that car and the small pieces. This has taken a lot from Model 3 and Model Y and uh -huh. sped up the process, which actually makes it easier turning into a race car. That's cool. Because we can yeah. take it apart faster and it's can with I move less this damage. Door? Of course, yeah. Okay. That's all good, yeah. I'm afraid to touch anything. That's okay. So interestingly enough, like, you know, with the panels removed and stuff, your windows and all that don't work. So one of our next steps is to get the, the switch gear out of there so that that works. Um, we actually have a racing seat in. Another great thing, the plaid seat bases are the same as Model 3. So if somebody wanted to put some plaid seats in their car, they could do it from a mounting standpoint. Huh. The, the harnesses are different. Um, and I think the harnesses are actually improved on the model you know, we have here in the Model S. Probably not many people have looked inside of here, right? This is yep. <laughs> So it's a nice, just simple two connector, one for all the switch gear and one for the airbag. It's so funny. Everything them. is powered off right now because we obviously are working on a lot of electronics and we want to make sure that everything's disconnected. Yeah, that's just hanging there. <laughs> the other challenge with cars, especially ones as high tech as the Tesla, is that when you're installing roll cages and racing components, a lot of times they mechanically will be in the way of where you have sensors. So. This car has a lot of yaw rate sensors, impact sensors, safety sensors. So whenever we're having to do something, we have to try to put it in a similar space and how it would work too. So we actually, what's nice is the fender line is removed here so you can get a peek at the suspension that is all different from the outgoing Model S. Front and rear are different. Anyone can Feel free to use screenshots of this video. Just credit Clean Technica and mention uh, Blake as well, Blake Fuller. Uh, yep. Any any special? Uh, well, here's a call to action. For electric you. performance, <laughs> or yeah. Well, I mean, what yeah, do you so want? What you do you want people to take? Check out the YouTube channel, which is Electric Performance. There, mm -hmm. there are two of them. One that has the documentation of our previous um, event and what we did, and there's a new channel that's set up 
that actually covers this vehicle and all the things going forward that are, are very racing and tech specific. Um, the other thing is that if you go to electricperformance.tv, that's where you can find out uh, not only about our program and our latest videos, but obviously a way to be able to support. So it's going to be, this is going to be another community sponsored car that we hope to not only do well in Mount Washington, but if we can get the community behind it, we'll be able to have the budget to take it to more events. We have a potential date in Daytona a month from now. You hear that, people? Um, yes. If, so. if more people get behind it, he can, can take it to more, more events. And even possibly back to set more records. To set another record. Yeah. Race more uh, fossil fuel, fuel vehicles. Yeah. Show this, them what's uh, up. This, this and, will absolutely. Uh, so let's support awesome. Blake. Support support Electric Performance, and uh, I guess let him get to work uh, getting ready for the race. So over here we've got uh, several parts of the Model S Plaid that have already been pulled out. I mean, I think most most of. What was going to be pulled out was pulled out. So you get a little view of the insides of the Model S Plaid that has been destroyed. Not really. So if you ever want to know more about the airbag that would save your life in an accident, this is the where the airbag is on the front for the steering wheel. Blake is in the race car seat now, driver's seat. So that could be interesting. And yeah. I don't know if I need to go forward more or not, but like... Yeah. So the other problem with having a touchscreen for so much stuff is when you can't reach it, when you're yeah. belts yeah. in, you know? And it's a different thing when you're on the highway with autopilot on, then you're <laughs> racing a car. Uh, Are there any top things that you're, you know, you just mentioned one, the, the screen possibly, uh, any top things you're concerned about or eager to sort of test out? Yeah, um, when the car's powered back up, because everything's touch, is making sure that I have three sets of gloves that I can actually utilize all uh -huh. of the required items mm -hmm. on the car and even be able to adjust things. So that's, that's a concern. Thank what you. is that? This is their this is their connector from the charge port going uh -huh. into um, the actual battery pack slash inverter. So instead of having heavy gauge like zero watt cabling that that previously weighed about 10 15 pounds, now they're using aluminum. And this is your charge input connector. So coming from your charge port, this actually is about right five to eight pounds lighter easier to stamp out, it shouldn't wear out as much over time, and it probably carries a lot more current, and it also has the ability to cool because it's got more surface area, so. Wow. Pretty neat stuff. You said, but it's also in the way when they put the cage in. Yeah, <laughs> where, where is it? So, in the... so this, that wraps around here. And then, to this guy. Okay, yeah, you can see the orange uh, connected there. So it would normally come back along here. Uh -huh. And this is actually where the rear bars land. So within the Model S chassis, this piece is the same in both cars, except for on the other car, the old Model S, somebody comes in and actually welds it, or a robot does. This one's just riveted and kind of steel stamped. This is not quite as strong, um, but they made the strength up in other areas, and there's, there's definitive changes all throughout the, the chassis, even some of these stampings. This whole back section is different. I mean, literally, I, I would guess it's probably 90% all the I haven't compared all the part numbers, but it is the first car that when this was powered on, and we actually had like Netflix inside oh, the yeah. cage. Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Say that again? What's, what's <laughs> the screen? Some of the competitors can actually watch Blake. movies while you're passing them. Yeah, Blake thinks this is for the losers who, who, who's, who's going to be smoking with the plaid. Can I watch something other than the car? Oh, okay. Um, and what did you actually do under there? So we will move this to take a look at kind of how the frame rail frame rail was built. Like there's, a, there's an aluminum frame rail that runs the whole length. 
and it's it's a completely different setup than the uh, previous Model S. It's actually a lot more robust and a lot stronger. And they probably did that, you know, to not only make the car safer and stronger, but they could basically use more aluminum there and then maybe use less materials elsewhere. This is all very kind of reinforced and webbed aluminum frame rail that goes all the way to the back. On the previous Model S, it pretty much was just a box design, so this has a lot more structural activity. This is also you can clean it by plants on the rear motors, so yeah, there's potential for better cooling. What, what was it like on the, sorry? Oh, on the, on the old Model S, it was just simply kind of like an aluminum box uh -huh. that ran that had a little bit of extrusions that were So the webbing, the yeah. webbing is really what makes, yeah. Yeah, it's like... Constant, I guess, better. Out here. What did you say about the, the door do panels? No, so the door so panels this are, is they're inside. completely re-engineered to where the, the way that it attaches to the door and the way that it's hooked on is like about half the time to be able to assemble. And then from a service, so, stand, service standpoint, there's a single connector on the rear panels. Yeah. On my car, there's five. So it's about there's, 10, 10 there's, minutes to take them on or off yeah. versus 20. 20 to 30. Yeah. 20 to 30. And the material and is totally different than the material. This actually stays together nicely. The other material falls apart. And mm -hmm. It's messy. So maybe that's to actually work on. It's also why, like, this thing, I think they just sell as a complete part cam. Uh huh. Like, if your switches go bad in certain things. Right. You know. But the handles are probably half the weight. You said there's a lot lighter, about half the weight of the and we have, the previous, we have, previous Model S. Yeah, we have weighed this thing. It's about 400 pounds lighter than the outgoing Model S. Oh wow, 400 pound cut. That's a lot. <laughs> That's, yeah. 10%.